Hello, you're watching Dukas Copy TV. I'm Thomas Taplin. Now, since Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al Sisi swept the opposition away with ease to become Egypt's eighth president, the country has taken on a renewed sense of optimism in the hope of putting the economy back on track. But what really can Sisi and his government achieve now the celebrations are over? And can Egypt once again become the major economic player it once was in Africa and the Middle East? Well, joining me on the line to help answer those questions and more is Professor Ahmed Rostam at the George Washington University Economics Department in Washington, D.C. Professor Rostam, thanks for joining me today. I recently made a trip to Egypt and to the capital, Cairo, and after speaking to a number of people on the ground there, they seemed to believe that it was the start of a new era, as if perhaps a saviour had arrived. Is this true? And more importantly, is it realistic? Well, thank you so much for the question, and I'm glad to be there. Well, uh, well this is a very important question, and I guess, uh, uh, as you mentioned, you followed the election. Uh, when, it, when asking true and realistic, I guess true, yes, it is true, because we have 23 million and more uh, votes in the box for uh, President Sisi to be in place. Uh, realism, I guess, uh, uh, this will be dependent on many factors. Uh, we've seen a very ambitious speech for the president two days ago, and uh, I guess uh, the president also acknowledged and believes that uh, 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 for realist to, be, to be realistic, he needs to deliver on ground, and he needs more efforts from an able and uh, um, a delivery team that will help him uh, deliver results on ground. So, yeah, true, it is true, realistic uh, effort will only make it realistic. One of the first things the new government is going to need to address is the economic plight of the country after what have been essentially two revolutions in almost as many years. How do you expect the new government to reignite investment in the country? Uh, well, um, as you know, Egypt is the biggest population in, in the Middle East region. It's one of the biggest uh, um, uh, consumption economies, and it's a big market. So um, I guess uh, also I'll refer to the president's speech two days ago that is outlining the program in the short and the medium term. Uh, the, the, the speech realistically addressed three main issues, I guess, that the investors were hungry to hear about. One is the issue of uh, the um, access to land. And I guess he explicitly mentioned that. He explicitly mentioned that he'll address the challenges of access to energy, which is, again, very much needed to see uh, the investments, again, uh, 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 going on ground in Egypt. Also, we, we heard about uh, dealing with the investment climate regulatory uh, uh, issues. And I guess what he meant here is issues relating to arbitration and uh, uh, protecting the investors' rights and addressing all these reverses that took place during the past two to three years uh, in court. So I guess we will be seeing more when it comes to these three issues to support investors. Also, I saw a very balanced uh, uh, approach um, that is very much needed for Egypt's case. The Egyptian economy actually needs a very strong positive productivity shock to put it, to put it back on place. So I saw uh, a balanced approach between supporting SMEs, which is very much needed to create jobs, but also supporting mega projects. And, and this is the right approach in the right time. The president outlined three main mega projects, I guess, in the Suez Canal and renewable energy and also the Daba uh, uh, nuclear uh, uh, energy project. I guess um, getting this approach uh, achieved on grounds will reinvigorate the investment um, activity in Egypt and revitalize it after two or three years of being stale uh, um, for, some, for some reason. Bondholders are feeling optimistic about Sisi's government, but rating agencies like Standard & Poor's still classify Egypt in the B-minus category. What needs to be done to address these contrasting facts? Well, um, yeah, this is a valid question too and, and valid concerns that are in place. Um, I think that uh, bondholders, they care to be paid under the and uh, so we are talking here about the sustainability of the debt and public finances. And on the other hand, uh, the, the um, rating agencies, they look mainly at three things. They look at political stability, they look at sustainability of government finances, and they look at how strong the external sector is. I guess uh, uh, when it, the, on, on the political side, I guess the developments are answering themselves on the, on the, on the outlook for political stability. Uh, when it comes, again, quickly to the external sector, um, I think Egypt has been uh, used to uh, running these deficits 
when it comes to an overall balance of payments. However, when it comes to the current account uh, that has been that has seen surplus for some time during the past five six years, definitely this turned into uh, um, some sort of a deficit due to obvious reasons of tourism and so on. So I'm seeing this uh, as as the uh, security is restored. I'm not very much concerned about the external side, and we are seeing uh, uh, also an active central bank with uh, uh, a stable exchange rate for the past three, four years. On the other side, the public uh, finances, um, I guess they are seeing major restructuring. We're seeing um, the, the treatment of an acute deficit of a double digit of 11 to 13 uh, percent expected for, for the current fiscal year. So the restructuring of the, uh, uh, of the government balance sheet on the revenue side and on the expenditure side through introducing uh, these progressive taxes uh, I guess would help achieve much more stability when it comes to uh, the budget deficit. Also, readdressing the energy subsidies in the short term will help reduce this acute deficit to a single digit. And this is what, uh, I guess, rating agencies will be looking at to reconsider the B-. Finally, there's talk of the Islamist al Noor party teaming up with Sisi's government. Is this likely to happen, do you think? And could it help heal existing rifts in certain communities to perhaps help bind the country country's workforce for the sake of the economy? Well, um, as you know, I'm an economist, and um, when it comes to, um, I'll answer this not from a, a, a political uh, expert, but from an Egyptian. Um, I'm seeing the uh, Nur Party, even if they don't join the government, but they have been always uh, uh, being positive when it comes to calling for changes and reforms. So I, I don't see them as an, uh, taking outlier, outlier measures. Uh, in uh, in playing the opposition role if they join the opposition and uh, I, do, I don't think in some areas they will have a problem to help and support the government but it all depends on how the coalition will be formed in the coming couple of weeks okay it's a big topic but sadly we've run out of time today join me tomorrow for our daily industry catch-up bulletin but for now bye-bye